Hello, world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Darcy. I left my coffee cup sitting there in the shot. It's waiting for me. As is my co-star is waiting for me. I've got bits and pieces all over the living room for a uh, second side project I'm embarking on. Not bonsai related. I won't bore you with it. What we are looking at are my bald cypress trees. They are just filling out and becoming more and more full of greenery. Uh, a lot of our balcony is filling out and looking like, looking rather lush. This place is quite the utopia right now. You know what? It's kind of a good thing. Uh, today, I could use a little utopia. As y'all know, I'm in sales, and uh, that means I, um, my obnoxious self gets the deal with the public, and I'm largely successful and good at it. I have my off days. So it's nice when you have some place that's green and lush and full of life and looking all pretty and tranquil, and frankly, the shade that these guys make cools down the balcony. Like as soon as I water these cypress trees, I'm just putting water down there on the substrate. But within a minute, I can feel that water coming out of these, coming out of the air, coming out into the air. Um, and the pines, it comes with pine scent. And with the cypress, it comes with the cypress scent. And I'm just gonna, um, I'm just kind of walking back into our place so I can show you how everybody's looking and there's nothing but really good things to be seen pretty much everywhere. The uh, cork bark that we keep trimming back has uh, well and truly shifted itself into higher gear and is starting to push out stuff like at a phenomenal rate. Our literati, I'm just going to swing high again. Our literati pine is trying to put out little seed pods and uh, pollen pods or whatever they're called. Meanwhile, the windy hot day was when our uh, the foliage on our wisteria decided to check out. It does that every summer and it comes back and that's our Japanese wisteria. It's not dead, it just does that. It just decided that's enough. We've done our blooms, we've done our whatever else we're doing and it's a hot day. I'll just I'll just chill for now. So th that's pretty much, it'll be leafless in another week. And then around August, it'll put out another flush, sometimes with blooms, sometimes not. But here's a little quick zoom in on our literati, on our literati pond. Let me see if I can get that. Yeah, there we go. It did it, it did it for me. You can see all the little pink colors in there. Uh, we're going to do our candles on, on this tree this year. We're going to do our candles on these little pines this year, except this one. This one doesn't look happy. I'm not sure. This is um, buck 50, and it hasn't had enough happen to it for it to look yellow. Uh, be cool, buck. We, we got you. Um, but a lot of my Japanese black pines will do candles. What, and, and uh, uh, while we're here, we'll do a check-in on all of these little Japanese black pine seedlings. These are last summer's seedlings. See how big they have grown. We were wiring and going just completely nuts on trees smaller than these last year. Meanwhile, these are the ones we did a few weeks ago. The clover is in a neck and neck race to see who can get biggest and take over the pot the fastest. Uh, that's my cue to go in there and uh, tip the scale in favor of our little pines. Meanwhile, our, uh, our Chinese wisteria is still leafed out, still looking nice. It bloomed for us the first time this year. We were really happy to see that. I have started cutting back some of its extra long stuff on top. The, uh, it's a vine. We can grow it into a tree. We can get it to uh, ramify and do all the stuff that you want bonsai to do, but it's a little trickier. It also, at the end of the day, would rather be a vine than anything. I know you're just gonna have to take my word. There's a um, there's a wisteria trunk in there, but it's not 
you know, it's not the greatest age-worthy trunk in the world. Um, but we have to we have to deliberately keep it down, or it will shin, send long tendrils like this was last year's tendrils, and uh, and then parts of it will die off down below as stuff at top grows. Uh, that's just what they do. They're uh, they want to be a vine really bad like that, and if there's something they can climb on, they will just they will just start making more at the top and shut down at the bottom. So to make keep this to bonsai it really is a big help that we uh, cut it back every year cut back the new growth every year to a to a workable keep it a workable size and um and that's kind of the name of that what we're going to look at today that we haven't spent hardly any time on this year uh this is our dawn redwood which has been in recovery this is what i would consider my worst bonsai tree. I bought this tree uh, a number of years, of several years ago, and uh, it it came to me looking like a broomstick that had been um, cut short so that you could use it to, uh, as a lock for a patio door. That's exactly what it looked like. It was probably this tall, and that was a straight, flat cut, and there was nothing down there but a little bit of stuff on the top that was combed over to where you couldn't see that chop. And you could have displayed it like that and people went, oh, what a cool looking little tree. But as soon as you kind of looked under the branch and saw that flat cut, it's kind of funny looking. It looked like, you know, in a miniature world, somebody would have climbed all the way up the top of that tree and then cut the top out of it and then let the branches below it cover up that mark. But what we're looking at here is a tree that I've been struggling with for over two years. I heavily carved it and thought that I would do a cathedral. And then after that, I went, you know, it's growing so fast. I could have made a really nice formal upright with the same carving that I had done if I had just left the wrap around or the, you know, the rollover uh, occur the way it would have. So uh, about the time, so I cut it back. I cut a lot of the cathedral it means that I had multiple tops coming up all at once like organ pipes or, or um, yeah. So that's kind of, that's kind of the, the thought behind that. So I chopped it back, a lot of its new growth. It wasn't but a year or two old. Right after that, it put out another flush and we began to put that, uh, put water to that and put it in a formal upright bin. Right after that, the tree got powdery mildew and defoliated at the end of the summer. The following spring came around and it waited till almost summer to flush out again. And I think something happened. It was weak and something, I don't might have been spider mites. I don't know. But from that moment on, from the second time that we decided to restall the tree within two years, um, I have been on the ropes with this tree and just trying to get it to produce something else that I can work with and it just produces new growth at those bigger and bigger knots from those two places but nothing else along the trunk anywhere so to build a tree out of that it has to be a tree that will be built from there and there so it could be we could carve this out more, have this be our new leader, and and carve this back to look more jagged. Maybe cut this shorter, maybe eliminate this, maybe not. And then over here, we've got several branches coming out there. Maybe we could go with this new little tuff here and then cut a lot of this other stuff back. But the idea is, is to get some growth out of there that we can use as a solitary branch and then cut back a lot of that heavy stuff if we can do that without killing the thing that we've selected. So far, I haven't had any luck with anything else that I've tried to do with my Dawn Redwood. And what it has taught me is that trees that seemingly are um, styling, you know, open to all different types of styling methods and stuff. And so you feel like 
that in some ways maybe you've got just so much latitude and what you can do is rob the energy of something and so then I'm on my back foot. I'm no longer deciding what this tree is going to be. I'm saying be something uh, as long as it means something not dead. And then whatever you give me, we'll try to build build off of that and going on three years. So the, the part of the story where I would say find your worst tree and do something with that and then that will elevate your garden. This is the one that I always think of. But this is also a good example of uh, it still has so much potential. And I still see the tree that I was really excited about in the early goings. So in my mind, I still see that tree. And, and from different angles, I can still see that tree. So this year, we're going to let quite a bit of this stuff uh, flush out and start adding energy back in because it's taken some of the energy that it, it has left to make this stuff. So uh, I'll put out a new round of, uh, I'll put out a new round of bio gold on this guy. And, uh, and then from that point, we'll try to take, you know, we'll try to make this our new dawn. I'm not totally hating the way these parts are rolling over if we could get something incorporated that could be branch-like and light and little, we could make this, you know, jagged gins or something that would be a continuation of this story. I don't like the way this looks, but I don't know that it would, I don't know that it has to look that bad. It could be, um, it could be that it could be a gin with a, a living branch coming out of it or something, if that's doable. Otherwise, we have, and uh, the one thing, some of the things we have going for us, okay? Some of the things we have going for us is, I wasn't crazy about my one remaining branch. The good news is, this guy right here, if allowed to propagate, and I will let it, would allow me to cut back a lot of this other ugly stuff. Uh, the same with this guy would allow me to cut back a lot of this ugly stuff. Also, a different way to go there when it comes to this side is this could also be my new apex if we chose. Or this could be our apex and we just keep working this piece at this height. Or a combination thereof and these two could continue the rollover that seems, you know, that quits right here on, on this side and quits right here on this side. We can get these two branches to be that rollover and continue to tell that story and maybe more, you know, and more things can come to life from here. Either way, uh, I think it would probably be, it would probably be a good time to very carefully remove, remove that wire off of both of those branches before it, before it does uh, something we won't get over. In fact, maybe maybe that would be our Saturday. I think I see our Saturday night live bonsai, which would just be a little clean up down at the base and that copper wire removal and maybe redoing our tourniquet. I would like it to incorporate this. I would like it to do that, to bring this a little closer, bring this piece a little closer in here. Um, and that's not so much locking off a plan as much as I see that a means to continue our options. We're not exercising an option. We're just, we're helping all of our options along to the next stage and see, and see what we, what we think later. Meanwhile, this needs to get more bio gold and less competition from, uh, from weeds and also just you know while i'm telling off on myself while i was going through here and weeding this a cloud came up of course it did that cloud was powdery mildew it was about this high so allowing clover to grow in here and then watering the plant every day means that the clover gets soft and wet and while we don't 
are not so worried about the health of our predators when it gets something that will harm our trees and then we pull it up and it spreads in a cloud. Now I need to go through and soak my maple, my uh, Kodaha maple forest because I've just pretty much, just pretty much gave it a severe dose of PM without being able to see it because that cloud would have been billions of spores, billions upon billions of spores. Uh, but otherwise, look, uh, Kodaha maple is almost all flushed out. There's still about three trees bringing up the rear. So far, it looks like everybody's on board that was on board last year. I've already got to go through with my tweezers and get some more weeds out of here. But um, it's looking it's looking pretty good. All right, we took a few days off uh, while we did a little home project. I appreciate the time. But I also um, cause me to appreciate you. Um, I also work. I also work in public, and uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just sometimes it's a joy and a pleasure, and sometimes it is not quite as easy. You got to pay for you got to pay for that or pay for past discretions, um, indiscretions. I'm not really sure what all that is. But at those times in my life, and I say in my life, but we all have those times when, when something tries, when something tries us a little, when something tries our patience, when something, you know, and it's at those times that when we get back to our little places of serenity, that really helps to remind us who we are and when who we are is happy it's hard to beat that it's hard for anybody it's hard for anybody else to get in there and win against that uh, like and subscribe if you guys have not already our next drop will be tomorrow. I will come back out here into the same spot and we will uh, cast our camera to the beautiful skies and we'll look down upon our little bonsai tree collection here. Maybe pull a weed or two. I'm not really sure what we're gonna do tomorrow, but you know, I am sure it will be something. Whatever it is, I promise it'll be something. And. Uh, I appreciate you, and I, I know Thorn Good and Well, Frida appreciates you. She always gets real feisty whenever I play our, uh, whenever I play one of our theme songs. And, um, thank you so much for watching. Okay, y'all can turn off the chainsaws now. We're all